And we dive right into the new MAC championship game. Mark Simon with you here to bring you the play-by-play -play of today's game, pitting the number one seed, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, against the number two seed, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Thanks for listening to our broadcast. WPI 21 and three this season, top seed in the tournament, nine and three during the regular season. Beat MIT twice. MIT. Two losses this season to WPI, but 20 wins. That's a school record. The teams met twice during the regular season with MIT losing two very close games. First and foremost on the mind of head coach Larry Anderson of MIT stopping Antoine Coleman. And we got Larry Anderson's thoughts on today's game. Those are the thoughts of MIT head coach Larry Anderson. His team in the New Mac Championship game for the first time going up against the defending league champs, the Worcester Polytechnic Institute Engineers. And this should be a very exciting game. These two teams played two very exciting games during the regular season. Worcester Polytechnic Institute won by a narrow margin both times. In both instances, as we mentioned, the key player was sophomore forward Antoine Coleman. Coleman for WPI scored 30 points in a 60 to 58 win on January 10th. He hit the winning shot with two seconds left in a 58-57 triumph on February the 2nd. Leading scorers in yesterday's games, the semifinal wins for MIT. Mike Doria had 17 points in the win over Coast Guard. The Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Uh, Worcester Polytechnic Institute Engineers were led by the 17 points of senior guard Ryan Flynn. And the head coach for uh, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, Chris Bartley, electing to start a lineup yesterday that featured four guards, and essentially Coach Anderson considers it to be a five-guard lineup for WPI, and he will go with the same lineup today. I want to welcome all those of you that are tuned in to our webcast via Penn Atlantic. This game can be seen live on the World Wide Web at www.newmaconline.com 
Just follow the link. It's a service of Penn Atlantic. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Mark Simon, and if you have any comments on today's broadcast, you can send them to mark at d3hoops.com. You look at the keys to the game for both teams. These are two teams that are a little bit of a contrast of styles. WPI averages 74 points a game. MIT averages 65 and allows only 58. The engineers of MIT are one of the top defensive teams in the country, and the key for WPI is probably going to be establishing its three-point shooting. Look at how many different players can shoot the three for Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Ryan Kane. Antoine Coleman, Ryan Flynn, James Maroyce, Brett Dixon, Mike Prestilio, you name it, they've got a player on the floor that can shoot the three-point shot. The engineers of Worcester Polytech hit three-pointers this season at a rate of better than 40%. The other thing you really have to like about the play of WPI is that if it's a close game late, you have to feel confident they're going to be able to finish it off. The Engineers won 11 games this season by five or fewer points. For MIT, their keys, it starts with defense. They two, do two things very well. They limit shots. Coast Guard only had 34 shots in its semifinal loss yesterday, and they capitalize on mistakes 21 turnovers for Coast Guard, and MIT turned chance after chance into points. MIT has won six consecutive games, so you have to like their momentum. They have the leading candidate for Player of the Year honors in the new Mac, Mike Doria, senior guard, averaging 19 points per game. And they have the leading candidate for Rookie of the Year as well, Jimmy Bartolotta. He's averaging 11 points per game. They also have a senior at the point, Danny Canamori, who at a moment's notice can become a very dynamic player. They are introducing the starting lineups for both teams. We will actually run those down while they are being introduced. We mention the engineers of WPI will start what is essentially a five-guard lineup. They'll go with Brett Dixon and Ryan Kane, certainly traditional guards, six-footer and a six-foot-one guard, Kane, team's leading scorer at almost 17 points per game. Ryan Flynn, essentially the third guard, senior six-footer who came off the bench for the most part this season. He's averaging almost 12 points per game, had the 17 yesterday. The other two, uh, in the, uh, they will be playing in the front court today. Brian Steele, six-foot-four-inch guard, he can play forward as well. And Antoine Coleman, sophomore, who will jump center in all likelihood. Coleman, the sophomore, the team's second leading scorer at 14.4 points per game. MIT will start more of a traditional look. They will go with a backcourt of Danny Canamori, the senior guard who goes five foot nine, and Mike Doria, six foot two. Both guys local products. Canamori from Brookline, Massachusetts, Doria from Newton. Phil Murray, Hamadou Samari, and Jimmy Bartolotta up front. Bartolotta is essentially a third guard small forward type, six foot four out of Colorado. Phil Murray goes six foot six. He's the least likely on the floor to score. He only averages six points per game. And Hamanu Samari essentially playing center. A sophomore stands six foot eight from Mali. We pause now for the national anthem. We thank you for tuning in to our broadcast today. The New Mac men's basketball championship game about to get underway. It's an all-engineers final from Harrington Auditorium, WPI and MIT, here for the championship of the new Mac and the right to, the, to advance to the NCAA tournament. The feeling is that WPI is playing with a little bit of a cushion today. 21-3 and three this season. Chances are if WPI doesn't win today, 
those engineers would likely get one of the Pool C slots that are allotted to teams that don't win their conferences and don't win their conference uh, tournaments. MIT, if it loses, likely headed to the ECAC tournament. 20-7 and seven this season overall, we mentioned. A school record for wins this season, surpassing the 1966-67 team. And they broke the record yesterday. Those engineers, as we mentioned, making their first appearance. Their first appearance in the New Mac Men's Basketball Tournament. Want to say hi to some folks that are tuned in across the globe. Want to say hi to a couple of New Mac Basketball folks, including Al Sowers, point guard for the United States Coast Guard Academy Men's Basketball Team. Thanks for tuning in. WPI will go from our left to our right. MIT will go from our right to our left. It's Coleman and Samari on the jump. The jump is batted around and controlled by Brian Steele of WPI. Kicks it in the corner to Ryan Flynn. He goes down the lane right to the hoop for two. Ryan Flynn, senior guard, a six-footer, averages almost 12 points per game and a quick basket for WPI and a 2-0 lead. Here's Kanamori across midcourt. First possession for MIT. They swing it to the left. Doria fouled. Hand checked there by Brett Dixon. First foul on WPI. Yesterday, WPI got off to a tremendous start against the Wheaton Lions. Went on a 28-2 run when the score was tied at 3. We're up 31-5. Blue Wheaton out early. MIT will inbound, and I think we got a five-second call there. Turnover. First turnover of the, turnover of the game. A little tongue-tied there. WPI will inbound from the backcourt. A 2-0 lead for the defending champs. We're 30 seconds in. WPI dressed in the home white. MIT dressed in the visiting red. Here's Flynn on the dribble drive. Kick in the corner to Flint to uh, Steele. Outside to Kane. Kane at the top of the circle. Swing it right for Brett Dixon. Dixon on the drive. Right to the basket. Up along the baseline. No good. Follow shot. Coleman it got blocked by Samari. And Danny Canamori comes up with the basketball for MIT. Now to Doria, front court left, cross court pass. Kanamori for three, it's short. And the rebound is taken by WPI's Brian Steele. Up the right side on the drive in the front court. 15 foot jump is off the mark. WPI trying to play at a quick pace in this game. MIT likes to play at a very deliberate style. Kanamori across mid court, he's stripped. The ball squirts loose and it's taken by WPI's Ryan Flynn. Up ahead to Steele, layup, no good, but he drew the foul. Foul on Phil Murray, his first. So Murray picks up his first foul. We are a minute and 21 seconds into the game. 2 nothing. Worcester Polytechnic Institute in front. First free throw for Brian Steele is good. If you want to send us an email, as we mentioned, we mentioned we gave out an email address earlier, but you can actually send something to cgsports2005 at aol.com. Steele makes both. He's two for two from the line, 78% free throw shooter. Four nothing lead. For the defending champs, WPI, Coach Anderson said he was concerned with how his team would start in this game. So far, a good start for where WPI, the home team. Murray front court left, cross court to Mike Doria, played on the outside by Dixon. Now MIT will go into a more deliberate set here with Samari right wing, played by Coleman. They rotate it to the left side to Doria. Nine on the shot clock. Up top, Bartolotta hits a three. First basket of the game for the MIT engineers. Jimmy Bartolotta hits the three at 39%. Three, uh, four, three WPI, and the engineers of uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology get the rebound there on that missed opportunity as WPI unable to convert on that last set. Dory at the top of the circle for MIT on his right for Phil Murray. Now to Sumari over to Doria. Doria left wing, pass down lot of Murray, one on one with Coleman, turns in the lane, kicks the ball back outside. Now back in to Samari, sends it back out to the perimeter. Five on the shot clock for MIT. Stumbling is uh, Bartolotta, shoots the three, missed it. Actually, that was Doria. And Antoine Coleman, the rebound for WPI. Here's Ryan Flynn in the front court. Kick out to Steele, now to Coleman. Driving on Samari, shoots over him. Wild shot, no good. And there's the hands of Samari grabbing the rebound. 4-3 WPI. We are a little less than three minutes in. New Mac Men's Basketball Championship game. 
Mike Doria for Jimmy Bartolotta. Lob pass down low, shot, turnaround shot, no good. Alex Kroll missed that one inside, missed about a five-footer. WPI controls the rebound. Four of three, Worcester Polytech in front. We're three minutes, 20 seconds into the game. This is Brian Steele out near midcourt. Makes a move to his right. MIT staying in its man-to-man -man look. Steele on the dribble left. Flips it to Brett Dixon, guarded by Sumari. Into the corner to Flynn. Three-pointer is good. Ryan Flynn likes to kick the legs up when he shoots the three-point shot. He converts there. He's got five points and a 7-3 WPI lead. 16 minutes, 15 seconds to play first half. Mike Doria across midcourt for MIT. On his right for Sumari. Now to Murray. Lob pass under the basket. Doria, basket good and a foul. Chance for a three-point play. They posted up the 6'2 Doria there, and he was able to draw the foul on Steele and hit the shot. So Steele's first foul, team second. WPI got in foul trouble yesterday, had three of its starters foul out. And MIT goes to the free throw line. This is Mike Doria. Senior, average 19 points per game. Shoots free throws at 77%. He makes that one, makes it a 7-6 game. 7-6, WPI in front. We're four minutes in to the new Mac Men's Basketball Championship. WPI beat Wheaton yesterday. MIT beat Coast Guard. Top two seeds advanced on both the men's and the women's side. Ryan Flynn to Brett Dixon. At the top of the circle, into the corner to Flynn. Flynn with a nice cross-court feed to a cutting Coleman for two. Antoine Coleman, first basket of the game. He's the one that gives Coach Anderson a lot of concerns of MIT. And a 9-6 lead for WPI. Four and a half minutes into the game. Bartolotta at the top of the circle on his left for Krull. Down the lane, Krull up. No good, drew the foul. He'll shoot. Alex Krull had 11 points off the bench yesterday in the win over Coast Guard. The junior guard goes six foot four, and he was quickly off the bench for uh, Kanamori. He goes to the free throw line here, 72 percent. Want to say hi to all those folks that are tuned in across the globe, both watching the game on the internet and listening on the web. First free throw, good for Alex Kroll, 72 percent free throw shooter. Both these teams shoot free throws very well. WPI hits at 74%. MIT shoots them at 71. Gary Atkins, six foot nine center, checks into the game for MIT. Gives them a little more size up front. Senior center from Missouri. Second free throw is good. Two for two for Krull. And WPI's lead is one at 9-8. So this game taking on a little bit of a different tone from yesterday's semifinal, the first game in which WPI blew Wheaton out. Dixon on the drive, kick out to Coleman at the foul line. Ten-foot jump, spins out. Leaping to grab the rebound, Krull for MIT. And MIT with a chance to grab the lead on this possession. We're five minutes in. Bartolotta fakes the three, draws his man in the air, and draws the foul. He'll shoot. Now let's see if they call that a three-shot foul. They're calling it looks like a two-shot foul there. That's on... Ryan Kane, his first. Kane was one of the guys that fouled out yesterday. James Morois checks in for WPI, a six foot four inch forward, more traditional forward, and Brett Dixon will come out. So they'll go a little bit bigger. And MIT trying to take advantage of its size in this game, particularly with Samari, who's six foot eight. Gary Atkins, front court left for MIT. To Samari, played by Coleman. On his right for Doria. Cross court to Krull. Takes the three over two men. He missed. And the rebound taken by Oyster Polytechnic Institute's Ryan Bork. He's also in, so uh, they'll go a little bit bigger now with the six foot nine inch Ryan Bork. Ryan Flynn for WPI on his right for Antoine Coleman along the sideline. Now to Kane, right side to Coleman at the foul line. Bounce pass in the corner to Flynn. Three pointer is good. Ryan Flynn's tough. He is a sharp, sharp shooter, and he hits the three there to make it a 12-8 lead. And MIT, actually no, WPI calls timeout. 14 minutes, 19 seconds to play in the first half. 12-8, Oyster Polytechnic Institute leading Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And a four-point lead for the host engineers, two engineers as we mentioned, playing in this game.
This game for the championship of the New England Women's and Men's Athletic Conference. The winner gets the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. There are at-large bids to be had as well. The feeling is that if WPI loses, it will get an at-large bid. The feeling is that if MIT loses, it would enter the ECAC tournament. And the leading candidates to go to the ECACs from this league are WPI, uh, rather uh, MIT, check that, and Coast Guard. And Ryan Flynn hitting that last three-pointer. He's now got eight points, including two threes. Yesterday, he had four first-half threes, finished with 17 points. Here's Crawl along the sideline right to Atkins on his left for Bartolotta. He fakes the shot, draws his defender in the air again, and draws the foul. Jimmy Bartolotta will go to the free throw line, and that's the second time today that WPI has bit on the head fake. And Bartolotta, who made a three-pointer earlier, goes to the free throw line. Leading candidate for New Mac Rookie of the Year honors. His first is good. Coach Anderson, and I talked to him yesterday, talked about the mix of the younger players with the veterans. He said it's been a perfect combination. Brian Steele replaces Ryan Flynn for WPI. That was the fifth team foul on WPI. The second free throw good as well. So Bartolotta's got five points. Story has got three. Krull has two. That's the 10 for MIT, which trails 12-10. We're under 14 minutes to play. Ryan Kane front court left for WPI. They reverse the ball to Steele on the right side, back to Kane, who's been shut out so far, played by Atkins. That's an odd matchup. Right side to Maroy, swings it left for Steele, fakes the three, finds Bork inside. Bork can't hit, but tips in his own miss. Ryan Bork at six foot nine can do that. Sophomore center from New Hampshire, averages four and a half points, four and a half rebounds a game. 14-10 lead for WPI, 13-25 to play. Mike Doria, cross midcourt, La pass for Sumari. Played by Coleman, tries to go under the basket. Bartolotta, reverse layup, good. Great catch by Bartolotta on that one. And he makes it a two-point game again. WPI leading 14-12. Here's Marois inside, he can't hit. And MIT grabs the rebound. Doria, cross midcourt. Again, they're playing with that. Kanamori for a long stretch here. Doria, front court left, backs it out to midcourt. Eyed by Ryan Kane to Atkins, down the lane, awkward move, shot got blocked by Bork. Comes right to Krull, he tries to draw the foul and can't. And WPI comes away with the basketball, Antoine Coleman. Ahead to Steele, in the corner to Kane, who's open for three, he hits. That's what Ryan Kane does best, connects from long range. The junior guard gives the host a 17-12 lead. Twelve and a half minutes to play, first half, New Mac Championship game. Hamadou Samari, front court right, played by Coleman. To Atkins at the top of the circle, he hands to Doria. Out near midcourt, one-on-one with Kane. 15 on the shot clock for MIT on this possession, which trails by five. Doria on the drive at the foul line. Jump is no good. Ryan Bork rebound. And now WPI asserting itself here has a five-point lead. Ryan Steele, front court right. Flips it to Marois. Cross court to Kane. Wide open three. No good. And the rebound taken by Mike Doria for MIT. Engineers try and push here. Right side, Bartolotta misses a three. And Ryan Bork grabs the rebound, hustling back for WPI. WPI trying to pick up the pace as Steele goes around the basket, kicks it out to Kane. At the foul line, down the lane, he's stripped. Steele for Jimmy Bartolotta for MIT. Gary Atkins a little slow to get up. And I think uh, Coach Anderson saw that. He wants a timeout. 11 minutes, 37 seconds to play in the first half. 17-12, Worcester Polytechnic Institute leading Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Again, thanks to those that are tuned in on the Internet. And a reminder that you can catch the video on the World Wide Web at www.newmaconline.com. I know a lot of the Coast Guard men's basketball players are watching this game from uh, back in New London, Connecticut. I appreciate that. I want to say hi to Al Sowers and uh, to Craig Johnson. A couple of super softs on the Coast Guard men's basketball team. Coast Guard had an excellent year in the New Mac this year, hoping to make the ECAC tournament. Wheaton, which lost to WPI yesterday, is hoping to make the ECACs as well. We have an update, a scoring update from the NESCAC men's championship game. 
Tufts leading Amherst 58-55 about midway through the second half. The NESCAC is considered, for those of you that might not be familiar with it, the premier New England men's basketball league. Very strong on the women's side as well. Tufts and Amherst both figure to go to the NCAA tournament regardless of the outcome of that game. Amherst is considered the dominant team in the region. They were ranked number one of the Lord Jeffs were throughout the 2005-2006 basketball season in the New England area. Want to say hi as well to Bob Quillman, voice of the Illinois Wesleyan Titans, listening from Bloomington, Illinois. Thanks for tuning in. CG Sports 2005 at AOL.com. We have 11 minutes and 31 seconds to play in the first half. 17-12, MIT leading WPI in the New Mac Men's Championship game. This is Gary Atkins for MIT, which goes from our right to our left, wearing the dark red uniforms. Flips to Samari. Samari hands it behind him to Bradley Gampel, backup point guard. He's now in the game. For Gary Atkins, lob pass down low. They kick it out to Gampel. Gampel across the lane, can't hit. WPI rebound, James Marois. Engineers of MIT, just 3 of 12 from the field so far, and that's going to be a blocking foul on Gary Atkins as Marois tried to attack the basket. And Marois will get free throws with 10.57 to play. 17-12, WPI in front. WPI won the league championship last year defeating Wheaton in the title game. Brian Steele will inbound. They called that a non-shooting foul. It's the team's second. This is Ryan Kane walking across the timeline on his right for Brian Steele. Back to Kane for three. Missed it short. He's been a little uh, slow with the shot so far today. The rebound got tipped out of bounds to MIT. Ryan Kane hits the three at 45%. 48% from the field overall, left-handed shooter, similar to Mike Doria of MIT. MIT Mall down five at 17-12, 10.35 to play first half. Gary Atkins at the top of the circle. Down low to Mike Doria, goes across the lane, can't hit. There's Samari on the glass, puts it up and in for two. Six foot eight, Hamadou Samari can make a big impact on this game. He gets his first basket, makes it a 17 14 game. Three point lead for WPI, which has the possession. A little bit of trouble there. Steve Ferber was able to save the ball from going out of bounds, gets it to James Marois. Swing it left for Brian Steele. Steele, one on one with Krull. Pass goes into the corner. Across the lane, Marois can't hit, and the big arms of Sumari grab the rebound for MIT. Three-point lead for WPI at 17-14. We're under 10 minutes to play. And a foul away from the ball, an offensive foul. It's on MIT. So the engineers of MIT look to be going for a potential tying shot there. Ryan Kane will come out. Antoine Coleman back in. Steve Ferber, who had checked in briefly for WPI, replaced to, by Coleman. And they will have, uh, let's see, they'll have Dixon. Coleman, Steele, and Flint. Essentially four guards and a forward. Ryan Bork at six foot nine. He's in as well. Brian Steele, front court right for WPI. To Flint in the corner, kicks it back outside to Steele. 15 on the shot clock. On the drive, Steele cut off. Gives it to Coleman, left side. He's double teed. Now they rotate it around the perimeter to Flint. He's got seven to shoot. Bounce pass inside and a travel. Turnover, ball back to MIT with 9 minutes and 23 seconds to play in the first half and a 17-14 lead for the home team, WPI, here at Harrington Auditorium. Mark Simon on the call of the new MAC championship game. Oh, Samari couldn't catch that pass. Steal for WPI. Coleman ahead of the field, dunks. Second basket for Antoine Coleman, who got great ups on that one. 19-14 lead for WPI. Saw Sumari dunk yesterday. Five-point lead for WPI, and there's a steal. Brian Steele for WPI across midcourt. On the drive, sends it back out to Flynn. He bobbles. It's loose, out of bounds, and the ball will stay with WPI. Eight minutes, 49 seconds to play. You can see what a dunk does to electrify the crowd. 
Coleman at six foot uh, three inches. It's funny, he averaged 14 points a game this season for WPI. And Coach Bartley was telling me in high school, his coach wouldn't let him shoot. And he wound up being the team's leading three-point shooter this year at 46%. He's had a terrific sophomore season. WPI ball leading by five at 19-14, 8.40 to play. Brett Dixon for Brian Steele. They tried to find Coleman down low. Good quick hands there by Jimmy Bartolotta. Knocked it out of bounds. Ball goes to WPI. Haven't seen Danny Canamori in a while. He had the right wrist bandaged up before the game. Wonder if that's a factor. And that pass into Ryan Kane goes out of bounds. The ball goes back to MIT. 8.34 to play. I wonder if Canamori's got a little bit of a wrist injury that he might be dealing with today. He's the normal point guard for MIT. There's a move to the basket. We're going to have a foul. Alex Kroll tried to go strong to the rim, and he'll get free throws with 8.26 to play. And MIT trailing by five. Canamori is sitting next to one of the assisted coaches on the bench for MIT. Senior guard who averages 26 minutes a game. I'm surprised he's been out for so long. First free throw for Alex Krull is good. He's got three points today, all on free throws. Mike Prestilio getting set to check in for WPI. It will be his first entrance. Prestilio, former league player of the year, has been bothered by a back injury this season. He's now in a reserve role, averaging five points a game. Senior guard from Connecticut. And Coach Bartley talked about the seniors being the founding fathers of this WPI program. When they were freshmen, the team won one conference game. Now as seniors, they're trying to become two-time league champs. Prestilio replaces Ryan Kane, who just picked up his second foul. He's the only player in this game in foul trouble that we know of. Someone just asked me if Kanamori has, uh, is in foul trouble. He's not. He doesn't have any fouls. Second free throw, good. And WPI's lead is three at 19-16. And a pass inside, and Coleman trying to catch it got bumped by Atkins of MIT. That's a foul. And that'll be the team's fourth. That's an interesting matchup with the six foot three Coleman guarded by the six foot nine Atkins. And here comes Katamori back in. He had a long rest. Mike Doria comes out. Gary Atkins out as well. And Hamadou Samari back in for the long arms at six foot eight. Mike Prestilio for Ryan Flynn and now to Brian Steele. Right side Coleman, three pointer way off the mark. Jimmy Bartolotta rebound for MIT. MIT wants to play this game in the 50s or 60s. They want to slow the tempo down. Here's a driving move to the hoop. Bartolotta, finger roll, doesn't go. Offensive rebound, though. Alex Kroll comes back outside. His pass nearly picked off. Nice play by Kanamori, and then he stepped out of bounds. Dribbled the ball right along the sideline. Turnover. Ball back to WPI. Seven minutes, 50 seconds to play. First half. 19-16, WPI leading MIT in the all-initials New Mac Men's Basketball Championship. Top two seeds in the league. WPI was a game better, 9-3. and three. MIT was 8-4. and four. Here's Brett Dixon on the dribble for WPI. Gives to Coleman at the top of the circle, played by Samari. Bobbles it, and a blocking uh, foul. And I think they're going to get Samari for that one with 7 minutes and 34 seconds to play. NESCAC men's championship game, Amherst 69, Tufts 68, about five minutes to go there. Dixon had a little trouble catching the inbounds pass for WPI, flips it to Brian Steele, and WPI sets up the possession here. Coleman at the top of the circle, on his right for Dixon, he moves left, guarded by Kanamori. To Prestilio on the wing, down low to Coleman, one-on-one -on -one with Sumari, tries to go around him, and that shot stuffed by Bartolotta. All back to MIT. Seven minutes, ten seconds to play. First half, 19-16 lead for Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Canamori for Bartolotta. The freshman calls a play guarded by the senior, Prestilio. Bartolotta along the right wing. Along the perimeter. Pass to his left. Bobble loose and stolen. Steal for WPI's Brian Steele. 
Second time we've said that today. Three-point lead for WPI. This is Flynn driving to the basket. Kick out Prestilio. He goes across the lane, up strong, can't hit. And crawl on the rebound for MIT. A lot of contact there, no call. And MIT trying to push it. That's going to be an offensive foul. Bartolotta going too strong to the basket. And an offensive foul. His first. Jimmy Bartolotta has six points. Got a little over eager there. That might have been a freshman mistake. Six minutes, 33 seconds to play. First half, WPI 19, MIT 16. Leading scorers, Ryan Flynn, eight points. Jimmy Bartolotta with six for visiting MIT. Here's Flynn right side for WPI. On the drive, challenged, kicks it to Prestilio. Prestilio finds Steele in the corner. Right side, Dixon, three-pointer spins out. And a loose ball foul on the rebound. They're going to get Coleman for that one. And that is going to be WPI's seventh foul. Coleman, who has four points, picks up his first foul. And a chance for free points here for MIT. Coach Bartley comes onto the court and yells a little encouragement at his team. And this will be Jimmy Bartolotta going to the free throw line. An 81% free throw shooter. Actually, check that. It's Phil Murray going to the free throw line. He makes the first. A little confusion there. Murray wears number 20. Bartolotta wears number 25. Second free throw for Murray, a little short. One out of two for the 66% shooter. Makes it a two-point game at 19-17. WPI possession going from our left to our right. We approach six minutes to play. Ryan Flynn for Mike Prestilio. In the corner to Dixon. Extra pass made there to Flynn. Flynn backs up on Sumari, kicks it in the corner to Dixon. He goes across the lane, finds Flynn in the corner. Right side, Prestilio, three short. Danny Canamori, rebound for MIT. Good ball movement there, but WPI could not finish. MIT ball trying to tie or take the lead with 5.35 to play in the first half. This is Bartolotta. Actually, Doria, rather. A ball knocked out of bounds. Stays with MIT. Getting a little confused there with Bartolotta and Doria. And James Maroisin for WPI replacing Mike Prestilio. You've noticed if you're uh, viewing this game, WPI likes to make that extra pass. Has to finish on that, though. MIT possession down by two at 19-17. Kroll finds Kanamori in the corner. He knocks down a three to give, w to give MIT the lead. 20-19, one-point lead for the visitors. 5-10 to play. WPI on the short end of this run here. Brian Steele in the left corner. Kick out to James Morois. Nice pass down low. Dixon got free, laid it in. And WPI takes the lead right back at 21-20. 4.55 to play. Here's a driving move. Doria tied up. Good job there by Brian Steele to hold his position. Ball stays with MIT. Four minutes, 57 seconds to play. 21-20, one-point lead for WPI. Kanamori out near midcourt for MIT. On the dribble right, guarded by Ryan Flint. Along the sideline to Doria. Played by Steele to Samari. Pass inside, picked off. Steele for Brett Dixon. Two on one for WPI. Dixon, bounce pass inside. Coleman, shot is good and a foul. Chance for three for Antoine Coleman. And a chance to extend the lead. Six points for Antoine Coleman. And Samari picks up the foul. And that's his third. So he has to come out. Coach Anderson took a gamble there, leaving him in with the two fouls. And Coleman made him pay. Free throw here, trying to complete the three-point play is good. Seven points for Antoine Coleman. 24-20, WPI leading MIT. Four minutes, 25 seconds to play. First half. Here's Alex Krull, top of the circle, three air ball. Ball out of bounds. And it goes to WPI. Four-point lead for WPI. 4.19 to play. Hi to Jason Southern, Coast Guard SID. Thanks for tuning in today. Hi to all the folks at the United States Coast Guard Academy. We appreciate the listenership support. James Marois for WPI. 
Now they swing the ball left for Brian Steele. In the corner to Flint. Flynn drives to the basket, goes up strong, and hits. Soft touch there for Ryan Flynn. He knows the rims well. 26-20 lead for WPI. Three minutes, 50 seconds to play first half. Danny Catamore with a bounce pass to Phil Murray left wing. MIT possession here, down by six. Canamori now finds Doria left side. Back to Canamori. Three-pointer is no good. It's spun out. James Morois rebound for WPI. Up the floor quickly. Right side, Dixon. Three-pointer is in. That one rolled around the rim, and it's a nine-point lead. Ten straight points for WPI. MIT wants time. 3.23 to play in the first half. 29-20, WPI in front. This game can be seen live on the World Wide Web at www.newmaconline.com. It's a service of Pet Atlantic. If you have any comments on our broadcast today, you can send them to mark at d3hoops.com. 29-20, WPI in front, and it seems that the Katamori three-pointer for MIT served as a nice wake-up call for WPI. The host engineers have run off the last 10 points. Brett Dixon converting from the three-point line making it a 29-20 WPI lead, and Dixon's got five points. They are so good. These engineers are at shooting the three-pointer. Dixon's got one today. Ryan Kane has one, and Ryan Flynn with two. WPI as a team shoots the three at 40%. Averages, as we mentioned in the pregame, 74 points per game. And MIT to probably win this one is going to have to hold them in the 50s or 60s. MIT possession down nine. Mike Doria across midcourt to Atkins left wing. Pass is picked off. Steal for WPI. Here's Coleman in the open floor. Coleman takes the pass back and dunks. Coleman made a pass to Brian Steele. Took the return feed for two. He's got nine points. 11 point lead for WPI at 31-20. Under three minutes to play first half. Mike Doria front court left. To Atkins at the top of the circle. He hands to Kanamori. Sideline right. Swings it for Doria left wing. Played by Dixon. Between the legs dribble. Backs it outside. Looking to hand it back to Kanamori. Ten on the shot clock. Doria holds on to the ball. He moves to his left. Now to the foul line. Jump is good. Well that's Mike Doria at his best right there. Two baskets. Five points for Doria. And it's 31-22. So that ends the run. By WPI. Had scored the last 12. James Maroy's front court right. Pops a three. He missed it. And the rebound taken by Jimmy Bartolotta for MIT. Up ahead to Doria. Front court right. On the drive. Doria. Left hand shot. Well off the mark. Got his own rebound. And he got tied up. And the arrow points to WPI. Exactly two minutes remaining in the first half. WPI 31. MIT 22. MIT had taken the lead on a three-pointer by Danny Canamori. And then WPI ran off 12 straight points. Here's a drive to the hoop. Ryan Flynn for two. And WPI scores right away on that possession. And MIT wants another timeout. Larry Anderson, a little frustrated, hops off the bench to instruct his team with a minute 47 to play in the first half. A 33-22 lead for the Worcester Polytechnic Institute Engineers. An 11-point cushion, and that certainly looms large in a game like this, a championship game where WPI has the championship experience in MIT, a little bit of an inexperienced team, even though it's a team with senior leadership. Danny Canamori, Phil Murray, Mike Doria, and Gary Atkins, the four seniors for MIT who really helped turn the program around. MIT last season in the new MAC won just three games. This year, eight wins and a second place finish. Got a scoring update on the NESCAC men's championship game. Amherst leading Tufts, 69-68, 449 to play. Our halftime guest will be the SID at the host school, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, Rusty Egan who joined us uh, on our broadcast yesterday. He will uh, hop up here for a 
visit, we will review the 2005-2006 New Max season. I know that on Monday they have the uh, voting, I believe it is, for the all New Mac first and second teams. There are 15 candidates for 10 spots. The Player of the Year award is expected to be hotly contested between Mike Doria, Craig Johnson, and Ryan Kane, and Derek Yvonne of Springfield as well. It's a real tough vote for the New Mac Player of the Year. MIT ball down 11 here at 33-22, 100 seconds to play in the half. Bartolotta left of the lane, tries to make a move to the basket, gets fouled. He got pushed. That's the eighth team foul. And that will result in free throws. Brian Steele picks up the foul. That's his second. He's got two. Ryan Kane has two. In fact, WPI made this run. That has pushed the lead to 11 as the free throw is good. Make it 10. Bartolotta with uh, eight points. Made the run with Kane on the bench. Brian Steele comes out, replaced by Ryan Bork. Second free throw here for Jimmy Bartolotta. Freshman guard from Colorado. Is good. MIT is a team that recruits its players from all over the country. So we hope that we have a good uh, viewership and listenership from them today. We have a minute 25 left in the first half. WPI 33, MIT 24. In the new Mac men's championship game, WPI on the possession. Ryan Flynn in the corner. Chased by Kanamori, dribbles over to the right wing. 15 on the shot clock here for the home team. Swing it left to Coleman. Coleman hands to Marois. Now to Dixon, down low to Coleman, seven on the shot clock. He goes across the lane, hook shot, rolls off the rim. Offensive rebound, James Marois. He'll shoot two as he missed inside, but a good job by Marois to grab the rebound. He'll go to the free throw line. NASCAC Championship just got another update, 79-79. 13 seconds to play there. James Marois to the line for two for WPI. His first spins out. Marois, a sophomore, six foot four. The expectations are big for him next season. Missed the first free throw. His second is good. First point of the game for James Marois. Seven different players have scored for WPI, which leads 34-24. We're under a minute left in the half. Jimmy Bartolotta in the corner for MIT. Back outside to Doria. On his left, Kanamori. Takes the baseline, goes up strong, and hits. Second basket for Danny Kanamori, trying to ignite his team a little bit. It trails by eight at 34-26, 38 seconds to play. Brett Dixon for Antoine Coleman for WPI. Pass to the left, Marois fakes, gets it inside to Coleman. Kick out, Dixon, three-pointer is good. They don't miss shots like that. WPI is too good from downtown. 37-26, 11-point lead for the hosts, 18 seconds to play. Atkins for Dory at the top of the circle. Jump up and no good. Ryan Bork, rebound for WPI with 8 seconds. He flips it behind him for Flynn with 5 seconds. He comes across midcourt, takes a look at the clock, shoots the long jump, air ball, and the ball goes out of bounds as the buzzer sounds. And the host team, the Worcester Polytechnic Institute Engineers, with an 11-point halftime lead on the Massachusetts Institute of Technology at 37-26. Unofficially, leading scorers in the first half, Ryan Flynn with 12 points for WPI, 9 points for Antoine Coleman, 8 points for Brett Dixon, 3 points for Ryan Kane, 2 for Brian Steele, and 1 point for James Marois. For MIT, Jimmy Bartolotta leading scorer, the freshman guard, Unnerved by the stakes of the championship game. He's got nine points. Four points for uh, Alex Krall. Mike Doria with five. Danny Kanamori with five, including a three-pointer that gave his team the lead. But then WPI went on a 12-0 run. Hamadou Samari with two points. And one point for Phil Murray, the senior. So we're at halftime of the New Mac championship game. 37-26, WPI leading MIT. And in a few moments, Rusty Egan, the Sports Information Director at uh, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, will join us. You're listening and viewing the New Mac Championship game. 
This game can be seen live on the World Wide Web at www.newmaconline.com. It's a service of Penn Atlantic. We're going to step out for 30 quick seconds. This is the Newmac Men's Championship game. We are at halftime of the New Mac Men's Basketball Championship game. WPI leading MIT 37-26. Rusty Egan, the SID at WPI, will join us in just a moment here. 37-26, our score. It was a 12-0 run for Worcester Polytechnic Institute after Danny Kanamori hit the go-ahead three for MIT. And in a battle of engineers, a 37-26 lead for the home team. And Rusty Egan joins us on our halftime report. And Rusty, I'll just say very simply, your impressions of the first half. Uh, it's been a, it's been a lot what I thought. Uh, two teams uh, that play very hard, going at one another. A little bit of uh, you know, a little bit of fatigue at uh, both ends. I think from a WPI standpoint, if you had told us uh, at about 1:30 yesterday that uh, you know we'd have to play the full 40 minutes, I would have told you we were very surprised. Uh, but you know, letting Wheaton back in that game that had a bit of an impact on this game. But the guard play has been strong. I think if you were uh, I think if you were, you were Chris Bartley, you had to go with that five-guard lineup to start the game, as we like to call it. Um, and, uh, you know, they provide a lot of energy. And right now it's uh, whichever team can come out with the most energy in the second half. 37-26 the score. And the key thing for WPI is that it was able to do a lot of this damage with Ryan Kane saddled with foul trouble with the two first-half fouls. He had just the one basket, a three-pointer. Ryan Flynn has been unbelievable this year. I would like to know what he had uh, for breakfast the last <laughs> two mornings because I'm going to have to copy that. The... The other man that's been an incredible man in this, in this tournament is the one kid you don't need to usually to score, and that's Brett Dixon, the point guard. He had a uh, season-high 14 last night. I believe he's got eight, maybe nine right now. Uh, so, you know, getting scoring from the point guard position, you know you're going to get it from Coleman. You know you're going to get it from Kane. Even know that you're going to get it from Flynn. Anything that you can get from Dixon is a definite add-on bonus. And they've done a very good job at shutting down Mike Doria, leading candidate for New Mac Player of the Year honors. He has just five first-half points. This is a guy that averages 19 points a game, and it seems that Chris Bartley has focused a lot of his defensive attention on that. And that's a great argument, because I think if you ask, you know, five different people who you think their Player of the Year is going to get, <laughs> I think you're going to get five different answers. He's right on the top of my list uh, among several others. Uh, that could be an entire halftime conversation within itself. Yeah, the, uh, we've already heard from a number of listeners during the course of this broadcast, including a couple of folks at uh, one of the teams that lost to the semifinals, the United States Coast Guard Academy. I think uh, Craig, uh, Johnson. Craig Johnson, if you ask me, I don't think there's a, there's a more intimidating post factor. I think from WPI, I think you can claim two different names. I think you can claim Kane or Coleman. You only have a 2,000 point score down the road in Springfield. Uh, Tim Dutal at Clark had a wonderful career as an outstanding post player. And then, of course, you have the two players from Wheaton, Sean Kelly. I don't think anybody plays harder than Sean Kelly. And you, you look at the New Max standings this year, and it was interesting just kind of reviewing the season. You start at the top, you go 9 and 3. Each step down the ladder is one game. MIT was 8 and 4. Coast Guard was 7 and 5. Wheaton was 6 and 6. Springfield was 5 and 7. Clark was 4 and 8. Babson was 3 and 9. It was very even. We didn't expect that this would be a 1 versus 2 matchup. Exactly. But of course, just a total of 3 points separates those two teams as the men's basketball SID liaison. I had the easiest uh, tie breaking system in the world. There were no, it's the only league I've ever been involved in where there have been no ties. It was amazing. But just think about this. Uh, WPI beats MIT basically at the buzzer four weeks ago. 
ago in Cambridge. That reverse, if there's a charge called on Coleman instead of a no call, we're at MIT right now. Who knows what happens? Yes, and the uh, that's certainly a factor. Home court advantage, a nice uh, home court advantage for WPI today. It's a good student turnout has come out. We have a women's scoring update. New Mac women's championship game. Halftime at Springfield College, Mount Holyoke leading Springfield 26-23. Springfield actually had a 17-7 lead in that game and a nice run by Mount Holyoke to close out the first half, trying to win the New Mac Championship on Springfield's home court. Uh, both teams with very impressive semifinal wins, Springfield uh, over Clark, and of course, Mount Holyoke, an incredible defensive effort over WPI, 62-39. WPI 0 for 20 from behind the arc. You're not going to be very successful, and that's the case. You, you, you can fault WPI, I'm sure, but you know what? you got to give credit to the Mount Holyoke defense. They're playing real well right now. Springfield's women's basketball team went to the Elite Eight last year, lost to Southern Maine, a team that made it, of course, to the Final Four, and Springfield hoping for the automatic bid once again. I think the new Mac on the women's side this year is a one-bid league. Right. I, I've sort of been focused on the men's side, and I know you've probably been able to look at both sides. What are the 21 bids on the other side? Yeah, it's there's a big pool C contingent this year on the women's side because it's a 63-team tournament. Men's side is a little bit less. The feeling is that WPI is upset-proof at this point, but I don't think Coach Bartley wants to take any chances with that. You know what? I'll buy you dinner if you go down to his locker room, Mark, and you tell, <laughs> right, if you tell that right now. I'll buy you dinner next weekend at the NCAAs. The new Mac also figures to have representation in the ECAC tournament with two, possibly three teams. And even. they traditionally do very well in the ECAC tournament. WPI a few years ago did very well. Wheaton's always a I believe Wheaton won it last year. Uh, Coast Guard would be a fine representative. MIT, if they're not selected to the NCAA, would be a fine uh, representative as well. So uh, perhaps as many as three teams. We hope only two. We hope, you know, WPI and MIT who or else both teams can get it. I know MIT would be a very, very difficult choice for a, a pool C with all the other quality teams from New England on there. But uh, whoever makes it, it, that's the great thing about at conference basketball. You root against everybody all year long. Then you get to a point in March 1st that everybody's rooting for everybody. It's, it's, just, it's just good basketball. 20 wins for MIT this season. A school record for them. The engineers. 105. Uh, we're not talking. Like they, they've been around for 25 <laughs> years, Mark. 105 years. You can triple my age and you still don't get there to 105. The, it, it's, it's really an impressive uh, performance performance. Coach Anderson said it was a tribute to everyone involved with the basketball program. This is a team that last year we mentioned won three new Mac games, had the biggest jump in the league, five games, went eight and four. Coach of the year, probably going to wind up being Coach Anderson. It's either going to be MIT or Coast Guard. Both coaches have done fantastic jobs bringing them to a next level. We had a really unique semifinal here. We had WPI, who's only ever won two conference games before this weekend, both of them last year. Coast Guard had only been to the uh, final, uh, the, the semifinals once. I believe MIT had only been to the semifinals once. It was like the junior prom, you know, everybody coming for the first time. And, in fact, I don't think Coast Guard had been here since since uh, 99. And, and we, we've had a good atmosphere. I really commented. It was a little more spirited, the Wheaton and the WPI crowd. And then you get Coast Guard on one side sitting right next to MIT. You got the cadets. You got MIT. You had a very, very loud vocal people, a, a group of people, and everybody got along. Everybody was respectful of one another in that second game. I really enjoyed watching that. It's kind of a neat atmosphere in the new Mac because you have five teams that essentially draw from a local population, and you have two schools that draw from a really broad population, Coast Guard and Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and we expect that there will be good uh, numbers in terms of people that check in with our broadcast today, both broadcasts, we hope and we so. expect that on the MIT if, side. If, if we can talk about that a little bit, Mark, we're very excited as a conference from uh, two fronts to have you here. Thank you. We know you're extremely busy, man. Everybody should see the Mark Simon helicopter. He goes from site <laughs> to site. You know, it's great. The helicopter landed on the roof. What time did you get here? About 1245? <laughs> yeah, you got it. You popped out. I don't know how you were that organized in 15 minutes to get this all set up. You've been all throughout the East Coast. Thank you for doing the two semifinal games. And and then we're really excited about uh, working with that Penn Atlantic and yourself uh, through, uh, through the multimedia di the different facets that you broadcast with, particularly today. We've always enjoyed a good relationship with that D3Hoops.com. And we just want to get our, our product out to everybody. And we're glad that people can watch on Penn Atlantic. This is something that's a wave of the future. We're very excited about that. They came all the way out here to try and teach knuckleheads like myself how to use it. And it looks good. It looks fantastic. We're getting rave reviews. I'm at the table. I've actually spent more time chatting with people watching the game than actually focusing on it. I missed both of Antoine Coleman's dunks, but I was able to pop it up and, and watch it uh, <laughs> on the stream. So we'd like to thank Jack at Pennington at Penn Atlantic. would like to thank yourself. would like to thank Pat Coleman. like to thank everybody that made this possible. Thank you, Mark. Absolutely. And uh, it is interesting working with this new technology because this is uh, 
potentially a wave of the future. Certainly, if you have any thoughts on the uh, broadcast in general, you can send them to mark at d3hoops.com, and I'll forward them along to both schools and to Penn Atlantic. And uh, we will certainly investigate the technology further. I know that there is talk that this is something that could be done a lot more in the future. I was future. just getting used to the audio people here. Now we add the, the, the technology, and it looks great. And, and uh, I'd also like to thank the, all, all the uh, technical people from the WPI standpoint that put this together. And the men's manager, um, Andrew, had been on the bench all season long, and then he asked him for a championship game uh, to come off the bench and do something for the greater good of, uh, of getting everybody else to watch. And, and, so and he's the he's clock guy. He's job. the uh, video guy. He, he, he is the video guy. He's been on the court. And he's got little little things that he usually does for good luck, and you know to ask him to sort of get outside of his area of comfort. He's really <laughs> stepped it up today, Mark. Ru- uh, thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Mark. Absolutely, Rusty Egan, SID at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. We're at halftime of the men's championship game in the New Mac, thirty-seven twenty-six WPI. We'll take a short break here. You're probably going to hear a little bit of silence. You might hear some band sound as well. In fact, I think we'll leave you with that. 37-26 at halftime. We'll be back in a little more than a minute, in all likelihood. This is the New Mac Men's Basketball Championship. That's got to stay on. Yes. One of these times you're going to have to let me do a game with you at some point. I did a game with Ray a few years ago. I had a blast. It's so tongue-tied with this new wave. What are you saying? Well, you can't say engineers. Mark Simon back at Harrington Auditorium in Worcester, Massachusetts. Halftime has concluded. WPI with a 37-26 lead on MIT in the New Mac Men's Championship game. Before a nice crowd here at Harrington Auditorium. There are a, a large number of people seated directly in front of us. Our broadcast location is high above courtside in an enclosed booth that we've opened the windows on. We have a nice perspective on the court. WPI in the first half shot 45%. MIT shot 30%. WPI led by the 12 points of Ryan Flynn, 5 for 5 from the field. Brett Dixon, Antoine Coleman also had very strong first halves. Coleman had 9 points and 4 rebounds. Dixon had 8 points. 3 points for Ryan Kane, 2 points apiece for Brian Steele and Ryan Bork. James Morois a single point. That's MI, That's uh, WPI's 37. MIT's 26, leading scorer was Jimmy Bartolotta with 9. Mike Doria, Danny Canamori each had 5 points. 4 points for Alex Kral, 2 for Hamadou Samari, 1 for Phil Murray. MIT, dressed to the visiting red, will start the second half going from our left to our right. This is Murray left of the lane, 12-foot jump is good. So Phil Murray gets the engineers of MIT going in the second half. 20 seconds in, he cuts the lead to 9 at 37-28. WPI dressed in the home white, nearly a steal, and the ball does go out of bounds. Ball back to MIT. Amherst on the verge of winning the NESCAC men's basketball tournament. 
In fact, that is a final now, 94-86 in overtime. So congratulations to the Lord Jeffs of Amherst. They were the defending champs in that league. Here's a move to the basket. Gary Atkins up strong, can't hit. Rebound tipped around. Bartolotta tried to tip it off Kane. It goes out of bounds off Bartolotta. WPI ball. MIT had a look at a shot there to make this a seven-point game, but couldn't hit. We are 40 seconds into the second half. WPI trying for its second straight league title with a 37-28 lead. Ryan Flynn for Ryan Kane. Attacks the basket. He tried to draw the foul. The shot got blocked. It got knocked out of bounds. They're rolling it off Murray. MIT plays a man-to-man, -man, has done so throughout the season and throughout the game. Not changing anything up for the championship contest. Inbounded to Brett Dixon. At the top of the circle, he finds Kane on his left to steal along the sideline. Both teams with the same five in that started the game with one exception. Gary Atkins in for Hamadou Samari for MIT. Steal right of the lane, ten-footer is short. The rebound is loose, Coleman has it. Coleman back up, can't hit. Nice play by Steele to grab the rebound. To Dixon, back to Steele, under the hoop, draws the foul, he'll shoot. With 18 minutes and 40 seconds to play. And I think we're going to have a timeout here. Yep, timeout MIT. 18.40 to play. The hustle of Brian Steele paying off for WPI on that possession. A nine-point lead for the home team. MIT has come out fairly aggressive in this second half, but on that last possession, WPI matched its aggressiveness and, in fact, bettered it, and Steele chased down the loose ball and was able to draw the foul. He'll go to the free throw line. 37-28, WPI in front. Looking at some of the other halftime stats, MIT, 10 first-half turnovers, WPI just four. And WPI had 10 assists on its 14 first-half baskets. The home team made five of 10 from three and four of five from the free throw line. Free throw shooting has been very good in this game. MIT was two of eight from three, 10 of 11 from the free throw line. Here's Brian Steele at the stripe for WPI. Six foot four senior guard, he makes the first. Brian Steele, Brett Dixon, Mike Prestilio, Steve Ferber, and Ryan Flynn, the seniors for WPI. And he makes the second as well. Four points for Brian Steele. Eleven point lead for WPI. 39-28. 18 minutes, 35 seconds to play. Danny Canamori across midcourt for MIT. Bounce pass for Murray, played by Kane. WPI in a man-to-man. -man. To Bartolotta in the corner. They reverse the ball. Canamori, three-pointer, no good. Ryan Kane rebound for WPI. 11-point lead for the host engineers. Here's Dixon on the drive. Kick out to Steele. Three-pointer too long. Rebound chased down by Jimmy Bartolotta for MIT. We are a little less than two minutes into the second half. 39-28. WPI up by 11. MIT possession, Gary Atkins for Jimmy Bartolotta, played by Steele. Cross-court, Canamore dribbles between his legs, gives it to Doria. Three-pointer is short, hit the rim twice. And WPI on the rebound, Ryan Kane quickly in the front court, left side, sends it back outside to Steele and now to Dixon. They reverse it to Flynn on the right, he goes down the lane, scores in a foul, chance for a three-point play. Seemed to be a delay there and whether or not they'd count the basket. Flynn, chance for three. 41-28, Kanamori the foul, his first. Fouls in the first half. Sumari, remember, had three. That's why he didn't start the second half. Phil Murray had two. Gary Atkins had two. For WPI, Ryan Kane with two and Brian Steele with two. Free throw, no good by Flynn. Unable to complete the three-point play. MIT on the rebound, trailing by 13 at 41-28. 17 minutes, 25 seconds to play. Dory in the corner, goes baseline, goes up strong. He scores in a foul. Chance for a three-point play. MIT has held down, has uh, had Mike Doria held down today. 
And Brian Steele picks up his third foul. Second half foul trouble was a problem for WPI yesterday. Doria trying to complete the three-point play. He makes the free throw. Makes it a 10-point game at 41-31. 10-point lead for WPI with 17 minutes and 15 seconds to play. Mike Doria has eight points. Ryan Flynn across midcourt. Hands to Kane. Now to Dixon. Back to Kane. Open for a three. Missed it. Short. MIT rebound. Jimmy Bartolotta. Gives to Doria across midcourt. Down the lane. Floater no good. Tipping no good. And Antoine Coleman grabs the rebound for WPI. MIT had a chance to get it to single digits there and could not. Now the MIT engineers come up with a steal. As WPI with a lazy pass there. A lazy bounce pass. Kanamori has it for MIT. He moves left. Played by Flint. To Bartolotta along the sideline. And now to Murray. Swung right for Doria, matched up with Dixon. To Kanamori, played by Flynn. On the dribble left, pass in the corner. Three-pointer is no good. Bartolotta missed that. Rebound Ryan Flint for WPI. Ahead to Kane, fakes the three, goes down the lane, and we're going to have... What are we going to have here? Is it a three-second call? Official didn't really signal much of anything there. James Marois in for WPI. Brian Steele comes out. And MIT brings Will Maraz into the game for the first time today. Sophomore guard from Colorado. He's in with Doria and Bartolotta in the backcourt. Atkins and Murray up front, so Kanamori is out of the game again. Mraz for Doria, sideline right for MIT. On the wing, he moves left, behind the back dribble. Kick out to Mraz, wild three, air ball out of bounds to WPI. 15 minutes, 43 seconds to play. 41-31, WPI in front. Ryan Flynn comes out. Adam Lorette in for WPI. Played very well yesterday off the bench in the win over Wheaton. Freshman guard normally only averages two points per game. Dixon across midcourt to Lorette, back to Dixon. WPI with a 10-point lead as we approach 15 and a half minutes to play. Brett Dixon sideline right. On the drive baseline, running layup is good. Brett Dixon has four baskets and 10 points. And it's a 12-point lead for WPI, 43-31. 15 minutes, 15 seconds to play. MIT has to find an answer on the offensive end. Gary Atkins, spin move. Pass into the corner. Three-pointer, Mraz, no good. Offensive rebound, Alex Krull. Krull for Atkins, who hands to Doria out near midcourt. MIT sets up again. Down 12, Krull. Kick out to uh, Murray. Now Doria finds Mraz left side, 12-foot jump, hits the side of the backboard, rebound Atkins, put back is good. Gary Atkins, first basket of the game. He normally only averages two points per game. Makes it a 10-point game at 43-33. Dixon thought he got fouled, went up, couldn't hit. The ball goes out of bounds, and it goes to MIT. Antoine Coleman comes out for WPI, replaced by Ryan Bork. So WPI electing to go a little bit bigger here. At 43-33, the home team with a 10-point lead, the defending league champs. Lob pass down low. Murray kicks it into the corner. Three-pointer, no good. Mraz. And Ryan Bork at 6'9", uses the long arms, grabs the rebound for WPI. 43-33, WPI by 10. Bork in the left block, played by Atkins for Lorette, and now to Dixon. Dixon sideline right, guarded by Doria. Now to Kane, right side to Dixon. He goes across the lane, now pulls up. His pass is picked off. Steal for Phil Murray for MIT. Up ahead to Doria, racing in the front court. Gets hammered, no call. Ryan Bork comes away with the basketball for WPI. Up the floor, Dixon, front court right now. Into the corner to James Marois. Back outside to Dixon. Marois replaced Ryan Flint. Dixon right wing. Exchanges with Lorette. Dixon now at the top of the circle. Bounce pass inside to Bork. 
Bork tried to post up. He got stripped. Steal for Gary Atkins. And MIT running the break. Doria one-on-one -on -one with Lorette. Draws the foul. He'll shoot with 13 minutes and 24 seconds to play. And MIT, a team that doesn't score a lot, averages only 65 points per game, trying to play catch-up here, down 10. We have a timeout on the floor. 13 minutes, 24 seconds to play in this second half. 43-33, Worcester Polytechnic Institute trying to win the NUMAC championship for the second consecutive season. You look at the history of the NUMAC men's basketball tournament, Clark is the all-time leader with three championships. Babson has two. Springfield and WPI won a piece. Clark was a dominant team in the late 90s and in the early part of the decade. Clark and Babson were the top two teams in the New England Women's and Men's Athletic Conference. Last year's championship game was very exciting. Came down to the final minute between WPI and Wheaton. Two years ago, the championship was decided on a tip-in right before the buzzer as Babson defeated Springfield to win the new Mac in 2004. 43-33, WPI in front. 13 minutes, 24 seconds to play, and the WPI cheerleaders on the court showing their support. Good contingent of fans. This is a big gym. This is a gym that seats about 2,000. And it looks like the entire lower portion is filled. The upper level is uh, fairly well stacked as well, particularly on the side that we're on. Mike Doria to the free throw line out of the timeout. And his first for MIT is good. Mike Doria has nine points. New, men's, New Mac Men's Basketball Tournament has been in existence since 1999. This is a conference whose roots date back to the mid-80s. Second free throw for Doria is good. He's got 10 points. This was originally the New Six, 1984-85 it was found. It was, it was a all-women's conference back then. 43-35, WPI by 8. 13-15 to play. Kane for Coleman in the left block for WPI. Posting up, tries to kick it back outside. Kane fakes the three. Gives it to Ryan Flynn, sideline right. Flynn on the dribble. He replaced uh, Steele, I believe. And there's a foul as Flynn tried to make a move to the basket. Third team foul on MIT. Joria picks up his first foul. WPI inbounds, Ryan Bork, right of the lane, can't hit, missed a five-footer. MIT rebound, Alex Krull. MIT down eight, 12.50 to play. At 43.35, Mike Doria across midcourt. To Atkins, left of the lane. Back to Doria on the drive, right to the hoop. Up, no good. Samari goes for the rebound, can't get it. It pinballs around. Kane able to tip it to Coleman. Here comes WPI up the floor. Ryan Flynn in the lane. Tries to find the trailer. Bork pass off his hands out of bounds. All back to MIT. Sean Ivey checks in for the first time for WPI. I think uh, Coach Bartley a little unhappy with what Bork did there. Brian Steele comes in as well. So Bork out and James Morois out. As WPI makes a couple of adjustments. Mike Doria across midcourt for MIT. Now left side. Into the corner. Mraz can't hit the three. Rebound is tipped loose. And MIT's got it. Doria at the top of the circle for three. Short. Missed a chance to make it a five-point game. Brian Steele the rebound for WPI. Up ahead to Flynn, fakes the three into the corner to Ryan Kane. Bounce pass inside, goes through Ivy's hands out of bounds. And the big men for WPI have turned them all over the last couple of times down the floor, allowing MIT to hang in. Maraz comes out, so does Krull. Danny Kanamori back in. Kanamori and Doria in the backcourt. Jimmy Bartolotta, Hamadou Samari, and Gary Atkins up front for MIT. 43-35 WPI, 
11.40 to play. Gary Atkins for Hamadou Samari out near midcourt to Kanamori left side. Now Doria posting up, tries to go baseline, lost the ball. Dribbled it off his foot out of bounds. Turnover, ball of WPI. 11 minutes, 33 seconds to play. New Mac men's championship game. WPI with a 43-35 lead. Sparked by a late first half run after MIT had taken a brief advantage. Here's Ryan Keane on the drive. Underhand layup doesn't go. MIT rebound, Hamadou Samari. Haven't seen Kane do that much today. That's one of his bread and butter moves. He likes to go to the basket and shoot the three-pointer. Eight-point lead for WPI. Nice look inside. Doria, 10-footer rolls off the rim. And again, MIT can't get this game closer than eight. Ryan Kane in the front court gives it to Steele. 10-foot jump rolls off the rim. Rebound loose and taken by Gary Atkins for MIT. 10 minutes, 45 seconds to play. There's a driving move to the hoop. That ball got knocked away. Here's Kanamori for three. Missed it short. Rebound hit Kane in the head and comes over to Steele. Brian Steele for WPI. Zigzags through trouble. And we're going to have a timeout. Coach Bartley figured that his team there was a little bit out of control. And with 10.33 to play, the clock is stopped. Timeout on the floor. WPI 43, MIT 35. We have 10 minutes and 33 seconds to play in the new Mac men's championship game. Halftime score on the women's side we mentioned. Mount Holyoke with a small lead on Springfield. At Springfield, trying to win the new Mac on the women's side. Springfield last year defeated Mount Holyoke. Uh, actually defeated uh, Clark for the league championship. Clark defeated Mount Holyoke, which hosted the tournament in the semifinals. Look at the history of the New Mac Men's Basketball Tournament. Mentioned that Clark has won it three times, 1999, 2001, and 2003. Babson won it in 2002 and 2004. Springfield won it in 2000. And WPI, its lone championship, coming in 2005. When I first started broadcasting uh, basketball in this uh, league, it's funny, WPI was at the bottom of the standings and their new coach, uh, Chris Bartley, had just taken over and was basically reconstructing the team from scratch, looking for real blue-collar hard workers that could shoot the ball. He talked about recruiting Ryan Flynn, who wasn't really recruited much to play basketball, and he talked about bringing him into the program and watching Flynn develop, and Flynn has been one of the stars of this new MAC tournament. He's got 14 points today. Brett Dixon with 10. Antoine Coleman with 9. 43-33 WPI. 43-35 rather. WPI by 8. 10-25 to play. Antoine Coleman out near midcourt. To Kane left wing. WPI working the clock down to 15. Now to Dixon and up top to Coleman. One on one with Samari. Left side to Steele. Pass down low. Ivy lost his man and drew the foul. Kanamori didn't really have a choice there. He's a foot shorter than Ivy. He got stuck guarding Ivy there on a switch, and he picks up the foul. Danny Kanamori's second foul. WPI will inbound. Brian Steele sends it all the way out to midcourt to Ryan Kane, who's been held in check today, just three points. Kane played by Kanamori down the lane, pass in the corner. Coleman, three-pointer, air ball, ugly shot. Rebound taken by Jimmy Bartolotta for MIT. This one's hung at about eight points for a good couple of minutes now. 43-35 WPI, 9.50 to play. Atkins for MIT at the top of the circle on his left for Samari. Out of his shooting range, played by Coleman. To Doria left wing, up top to Kanamori. They'll work the offense here with 12 on the shot clock. Kanamori moves to his left around the screen, fakes the shot. Now drives, kicks it back outside. Here's a three. Dorian, no good. Rebound, Kanamori. Back outside, Doria finds Samari inside. In the right block, spin move, shot up, no good. Too strong. MIT just can't buy a basket and a foul behind the play. Let's see if they get Ivy for that. Yeah, Ivy's going to be called for retaliation there on Bartolotta. That's a break for MIT. That's an offensive foul on WPI. 9.20 to play. Second half, 43-35. WPI in front. 
It has been a long time since we've seen a basket. Inbounds pass to Samari, and MIT has it here down by eight. Kanamori finds a man in the corner. Bartolotta air balls a three. Brian Steele for WPI. Ahead to Ryan Kane. Cross court to Dixon. Up top to Coleman. Right side to Steele. In the corner to Kane for three. Short. Offensive rebound. Ryan Flint. And the engineers get another crack at it here. Flint on the drive. Kick out to Steele. Three-pointer is good. Finally, someone hits. And it's Brian Steele from downtown. His first basket of the game. 46-35. That was the first basket in this game in nearly six minutes. Hamid is Samari, and they work it down low. MIT does, and a foul call. There's Bartolotta caught an entry pass in the post. The clock stops with 8.37 to play. Brian Steele just picked up his fourth foul, so he makes the three-pointer, and then he commits the foul on the other end. That's the team's fourth, both teams with four fouls. Sub in for WPI. James Morois replaces Brian Steele. MIT will inbound down by 11. They inbound it to Samari, right of the lane. He hands to Kanamori, who dribbles back out to midcourt. Kanamori with the bounce pass to his left to Alex Krull. Krull for Sumari at the top of the circle. He hands to Bartolotta. Down low to Krull, posting up on two men, tries to shoot over them, draws the foul. He'll shoot two. With 8 minutes and 18 seconds to play. Before that steal three-pointer, which came with about 8.45 remaining, the last basket prior to that was at 14.42 left on the clock. This game really turned into a defensive struggle for a good 5 to 6 minutes of play. 8.18 to play. MIT free throws here, down by 11. The first is short for Alex Crow. 72% free throw shooter. He's got four free throws today. Second free throw rolls in. Carl's got five points. It's 46-36. MIT back to within 10. But now the clock is the engineer's enemy and the engineer's friend. The engineers of WPI, that is. 8.05 to play. Ryan Flynn, front court left. Kick out to Kane. Out near midcourt. Sends it over to Dixon. Dixon eyed by Sumari. To Coleman at the top of the circle on his left for Kane. Goes on the drive. Kane up and in. Good body control there by Ryan Kane. His second basket of the game. WPI 48. MIT 36. Three-pointer right side. Crawl no good. Offensive rebound. Atkins for MIT. Flips it back to Kanamori in the corner. Now dribbles back outside, and again, MIT will call a play and go into a set here. Down by 12. Here's Krull on the drive. Baseline right, attacks the basket and hits. Alex Krull, first basket of the game. He's got seven points. WPI's lead is 10 at 48-38. WPI ball, 7-10 to play. Kane for Coleman, right wing. Coleman bobbles the dribble. Sumari going for the basketball. Gets tied up, and Coleman hangs on to it. Calls a timeout. Seven minutes and four seconds to play. And MIT trailing by ten as WPI uses a timeout to not turn the ball over. Actually, off the arrow, it would have remained WPI ball. We have seven minutes and four seconds to play. This is the new Mac Men's Basketball Championship game. 48-38, WPI leading Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Reminding you folks out there that this game can be seen live on the World Wide Web at www.newmaconline.com. It is a service of Penn Atlantic, and if you want to send us an email, we'll pass it on to those folks. We'll pass it on to the folks at the New Mac. You can send it to mark at d3hoops.com. WPI won the semifinal yesterday with an offensive performance. Racked up the points against Wheaton. MIT won. More noted for its defense in its win over Coast Guard. Limiting the Coast Guard Academy's shots from the field. That was the key factor in this game. In that game. In this game, WPI had the better of play for about a three to four minute stretch late in the first half. Got shots off. Got good possessions. Had the game going at the tempo that it wanted and took control of the game, took the lead into halftime at 37-26. Second half scoring, 
Both teams are scoring less than a point a minute. WPI has scored 11 points. MIT has scored 12. 48-38, WPI in front. And out of the timeout, it will be WPI ball. Home team in white today with a 10-point lead. In the New Mac Championship game, seven minutes to play. Brett Dixon at the top of the circle. On his right for Ryan Flynn, played by Jimmy Bartolotta. He attacks the basket. Flynn up, in, and a foul. Chance for a three-point play. And every time that WPI has been in need of a basket and Flynn's been on the court, he's been the man to provide it. Jimmy Bartolotta picks up the foul, his second. 16 points for Ryan Flint, trying to match his total from yesterday when he had 17. Average is 11.8 points per game. Free throw is good. Senior guard, a six-footer, local guy from Hamilton, Massachusetts, extends the lead to 13 at 51-38, 6.45 to play. WPI won both regular season meetings. Trying to make it a clean sweep of three straight for the New Mac Championship. Alex Kroll for MIT, 17 on the shot clock. He flips it back to Kanamori out near midcourt. Calls out a play, eyed by Flynn, who stays right with him. Kanamori shoots the three, airballs it out of bounds to WPI. Danny Kanamori, a senior, had a brief role in the movie Coach Carter. Went out to Hollywood uh, for a little while. Decided to pursue acting. He got to appear in a basketball movie. Was hoping for uh, somewhat of a movie-like finish today to his collegiate basketball career. Hoping to win a championship as a senior. But his team down by 13. WPI on the possession. Ryan Kane trapped. Gets it back outside. Marois, three-pointer good. James Marois from the top of the circle. His first three of the game. MIT wants time. 5.54 to play. 54-38 WPI in the New Mac Men's Championship game. Let the band entertain you here for a few moments. We have five minutes and 54 seconds to play. 54-38 WPI in front. Hopefully you were able to hear that, the WPI band. 54 and 38, WPI leading MIT. We have five minutes and 54 seconds to play. In the New Mac Men's Championship game, James Marois, potential dagger of a three-point shot there. His first three-pointer of the game, and Marois, who comes off the bench averaging seven points per game, hit a big shot there. Dixon has two threes, Kane has one, Marois has one, Steele has one, Flynn has two. MIT has not had an answer to, for the three-point shooting of WPI today on its offensive end. Trailing by 16 at 54-38, 5.45 to play. Bartolotta for Doria, front court right for MIT. Shake and bake dribble, stumbles, tie up, no travel, turnover. Ball back to WPI. Five thirty-eight to play. The ball goes back to the home team. WPI with a 16-point lead. Ryan Kane for Brett Dixon. Over to, to Flynn. They work the ball around the perimeter. Dixon in the corner. Back outside to Coleman. For Flynn left wing. They'll work the clock here. Shot clock at 10. Game clock at 5-10. Flynn with eight, moves right, played by Samari. Into the corner to Coleman. He fakes with four on the shot clock. Kick out, Dixon, three-pointer, no good. 
Jimmy Bartolotta rebound for MIT. We hit five minutes to play. MIT down by 16 at 54-38. Hamadou Samari for Gary Atkins. Left wing to Doria. They reverse the ball. Bartolotta hands to Doria now. He moves right on Kane. Joria dribbles back outside. 10 on the shot clock. MIT in no rush here. Down by 16. Need a little more urgency. Atkins hands it back to Joria. Three to shoot. In the corner, Bartolotta hits a three and a foul. Chance for a four-point play. 4.27 to play, and Bartolotta hits his second three of the game. 13 points for Jimmy Bartolotta. Foul was on Flynn, his second. And after what was a rather messy possession, MIT gets three, chance for four. Bartolotta, free throw is good. 54-42, 12-point game. 4.20 to play, WPI in the lead and with the ball. Brett Dixon, front court right, gives it to Kane, left wing. Kane down the lane, sends it back outside to Flint, to Dixon, and now to Marois. Sideline left, back outside to Dixon, on his right for Flint. Flint on the wing, with 10 on the shot clock, he gives to Kane. Kane on the dribble drive, right to the hoop, underhand layup is good. Ryan Kane attacking the basket, his third hoop of the game. Seven points for Kane, 56-42, WPI by 14, 3.45 to play. Doria on the drive, floater, well short of the rim. James Morois rebound, engineers push it up the floor. Coleman running layup is good. WPI scores in transition, five baskets for Antoine Coleman. He's got 11 points. 16-point lead, I think the crowd can sense it now. WPI in front, 58-42, 3.20 to play. MIT has not seriously challenged WPI in the second half. There's a drive to the basket. Bartolotta hits again. Jimmy Bartolotta has had the strongest offensive game for MIT today. He's got 16 points, and he makes it a 14-point game at 58-44. Three minutes to play. Ryan Flynn, front court right to Marois, left wing to Dixon. Up top to Kane. He moves right, working the clock again, 15 on the shot clock, 2.50 left in the game. Ryan Flynn out near midcourt. Pass to his right to Marois. Turns, spins, gives it to Dixon. Down the lane, and the shot no good. I think Samari may have gotten a piece of that. MIT rebound, and with the ball here, 2.30 to play. Can, uh, rather, uh, driving to the basket, Bartolotta, reverse layup is good. Bartolotta's got eight quick points there, now has 18. 58-46, might be too little too late. His team trails by 12, 2.20 to play. Dixon's going to work the clock here for WPI. Finds Flynn on his left. Flynn out near midcourt. Cross court to Kane, in the corner to Dixon. Given room by Samari. Up top to Marois. Marois moves right, flips it to Dixon. Eight on the shot clock, into the corner Marois. He fakes, he goes across the lane. His shot no good, but he drew the foul. With a minute 56. Hamadou Samari picks up the foul, his fourth. Minute 56 to play. We talked about MIT's defense at the start of this game. WPI has done an excellent job defensively throughout. Really holding Mike Doria in check. He's got 10 points. Average is 19. The one scorer today for MIT has been Jimmy Bartolotta. Other than that, MIT offensively has been almost completely shut down. First free throw good for James Marois. He's got five points. 59-46. WPI by 13, minute 56 to play. Second free throw is good. 60-46, to 14-point lead. And WPI, a minute 50 away from back-to-back -back New Mac championships. Top of the key, three-pointer good for Alex Krull, the junior guard. And he makes it an 11-point game at 60-49. to 49. So MIT scores on that possession. Minute 35 to play. And a foul in the backcourt. 
And an injured WPI player is going to be helped up as Krull fouled Flynn hard. Flynn gets up. He's all right. Krull's foul is his first. It is the team's seventh. Ryan Flynn to the free throw line for WPI with a minute 36. MIT as a team today has been held to just 28% shooting from the field. Flynn, first free throw is good. And MIT makes a substitution here. Samari comes out. Brian Steele replaces James Marois. I think Chris Bartley, the head coach at WPI, wants to get as many uh, seniors on the floor as he can for the game's final minute 36. Second free throw good for Flynn. A money player all year. Ryan Flynn has 19 points today in the New Mac Championship game. Under 90 seconds to play, Jimmy Bartolotta driving to the hoop for two for MIT. Makes it an 11-point game again, and WPI wants a timeout. Minute 22 to play. And a timeout. MIT's not giving up just yet. Down by 11. It's 62 to 51. With a minute 22, Coach Anderson is imploring his team to play this one till it's over. MIT with 20 wins this season, setting a school record. Broke the mark set previously by the 1966-67 team. They have had basketball at MIT for more than 100 years, and this is arguably the best team in school history. It is a team with 20 wins that is likely, with a loss today, headed to the ECAC tournament. The ECAC field is rather crowded in the New England region. A couple of conference champs got knocked off in their conference tournaments. Keene State and Emmanuel figure to be the top two seeds in the ECACs. New Mac hoping to send at least two teams to the ECAC tournament. And there's a foul on the inbounds pass. Ryan Flynn catches, gets fouled. That is the eighth team foul on MIT. It stops the clock with a minute 21. And they're going to have to hope that Flynn misses his free throws. The rest of the potential ECAC field includes the likes of Salem State, which was co-regular season champs in the Massachusetts uh, Conference, Massachusetts Collegiate Athletic Conference, Westfield State, the team with which they shared the co-championship, a couple of teams in the Little East, Keene State, as we mentioned, and Rhode Island College. Free throw is no good by Flynn, and with a minute 20 to play, MIT has the rebound down by 11. Here's Doria across midcourt, takes the three, and he missed it, Law. They try and tip the rebound back outside. Doria's got it. Right side, Krull. His three, no good. Offensive rebound, Bartolotta. He got stripped. Ball out of bounds, and it goes to MIT. Mentioned that Coast Guard and Wheaton are the uh, other candidates from the New England Women's and Men's Athletic Conference. And I know that the Coast Guard folks back in New London are, and Wheaton's as well are rooting for MIT today. Another shot inside, no good, off a catch on the inbounds pass. And they foul Ryan Flynn as he grabs the rebound with 57.7 seconds to play. 62-51, 11-point lead for WPI. Again, want to thank the folks from around the New Mac that are tuned into this game. The likes of those at Wheaton and Babson and Clark and Springfield. I presume there are some folks at Springfield watching as uh, the women's game goes on in the background there. Ryan Keane will go to the free throw line. I've heard from a lot of folks at the Coast Guard. The uh, Coast Guard is where I normally broadcast basketball. Keane's got eight points. He makes the first. 63-51. WPI, 57.7 seconds away from winning the New Mac uh, championship. Second free throw is good. Kane, normally the team's leading scorer, has nine. He averages 17. They did a good job on him. They just couldn't stop Ryan Flint. 50 seconds to play. MIT ball. Bartolotta driving shot. Good. Jimmy Bartolotta has racked up points in the final couple of minutes of this game. MIT fouls again with 47.4. And it will result in another one and one for WPI. 
64-53, so both teams uh, getting their scoring in at the end of this game. We had a six-minute stretch in this game with uh, very little scoring. Here's Ryan Flynn to the free throw line. If you want to find out about the NCAA tournament selections later today, the selected teams will be announced. That will come at about 10 o'clock. You can go to www.d3hoops.com for that. And tomorrow morning they will announce the pairings. First free throw good for Ryan Flynn. d3hoops.com has provided me with their pairings at this hour. And they expect that WPI will be hosting. Second free throw is no good. MIT rebound. 12-point lead for WPI at 65-53. WPI hosted an NCAA tournament game last year, beat Western Connecticut State. MIT misses inside. WPI rebound. About a half-second difference, shot clock and game clock here. Looks like MIT will foul with 25.3. Last time we checked in with the folks at D3Hoops.com, they uh, told us that you could expect that WPI would wind up hosting essentially a four-team regional. First free throw good. One more for Brian Steele, who has five free throws and eight points. D3Hoops.com projecting that WPI would play the champs of the MASCAC, Bridgewater State, and would host a game between UMass Boston, champs of the Little East, and Tufts, the runners-up in the NESCAC. MIT ball, 17 seconds to play. Long three-pointer, no good. Rebound, Brett Dixon, 12.7 to play. He's fouled. 67-53, WPI just kind of finishing this one off at this point, and the WPI bench comes to its feet. And the crowd starting to chant, it's all over. because this would be the second consecutive championship for Worcester Polytechnic Institute. The defending champs as the first free throw is good. One more for Ryan Flynn. The defending champs went through a little bit of a rough spot at the end of the season. Lost to Coast Guard, lost to Wheaton. We're given a real tough game by Springfield, but played very well in this new MAC tournament. Defeating Wheaton handily and defeating MIT handily as well. 12.7 seconds to play, 69-53 MIT, trailing by 16. WPI takes its seniors out. Big hug for Coach Bartley and Ryan Flynn. And Brian Steele comes to the bench as well. The underclassmen now on the floor for the final seconds for WPI. Three-pointer top of the key good for Mike Doria. We have 5.6 to play. WPI can dribble it out. It'll be a 69-56 win for the home team, the new MAC champs, the WPI engineers. They take the new MAC championship and advance to the NCAA tournament. A 69-56 victory, the second consecutive new MAC tournament championship for WPI. Ryan Flynn was the story today, much like he was yesterday. The senior guard from Hamilton, Massachusetts. We have him for 21 points. And a 69-56 to 56 victory for his team. The WPI engineers, who improved to 22-3 this season, they're going to be dancing in the NCAA tournament. With the field announced later tonight. And then... The pairings announced tomorrow morning. They will pose for a picture at midcourt. Chris Bartley and his team. They're feeling pretty good right now. 69-56 victors over the MIT Engineers. And we want to thank all the folks involved in helping us out with our broadcast today. I think we're going to stay with the uh, public address here, try and get the uh, the announcement of uh, any awards and the presentation of the championship trophy. Looks like our uh, video guy is staying with that, so we're going to stay with that. The uh, 
public address announcer is uh, thanking the folks in the crowd for their support. The WPI players continue to hug and congratulate each other on the sideline. MIT talking around its head coach, Larry Anderson. The engineers now 20 and 8 and headed to the ECACs in all likelihood could be the uh, top seed or at the very least should get a home game in the first round of the ECAC tournament. Katie Hersey, of Babson, uh, who works out of Babson College, will present the championship trophy to WPI. 22-3 and three this season, 9-3 and three during the regular season in the New Mac. And the captains, Brett Dixon and Mike Prestilio, come out to raise the championship trophy. And a 69-56 win for WPI, which is headed to the NCAA tournament. They get the t-shirts out. They pose for pictures. And MIT just kind of watching. The heads are down on the MIT bench. They have to be feeling a little bit dejected with the way this game turned out. Defensively, WPI did the job on MIT today. We thought it might go the other way. But WPI's defense and the scoring of Ryan Flint the third leading scorer on this team made the biggest difference in this championship tournament. And the engineers of WPI, 69-56 winners over Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I presume we have a good number of uh, WPI alums tuned into our broadcast. Congratulations to them. Let you kind of take in the celebration here as the players pose for pictures here at Harrington Auditorium, where WPI has won it. 69-56, taking the new MAC championship. The crowd continues to clap, show its support. For the champions of the new Mac, the Worcester Polytechnic Institute of uh, Engineers, 69-56 winners over Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And they salute the crowd now. Excellent turnout for the new Mac championship game. We hope both on the internet and in person. Very good crowd here. We have a final from the women's championship game. Springfield defeats Mount Holyoke, 57-51. to 